You're listening to Passion Project, and I'm your host, Kat Margulis. Larissa Primo is founder of Framework Creative Content and co-founder of Play Factory. She established Framework in 2010 as a production company focusing on video and online content for a variety of clients. And in 2017, Play Factory was born, expanding the scope of Framework's business to introduce gamification of training and interactive branded experiences. Larissa is also a filmmaker, recently writing and directing a short comedy that was an official selection of the Toronto Shorts International Film Festival and Method Fest in Los Angeles. She is currently in development with her feature film and, and another short comedy is in post-production. Larissa lives in Toronto with her husband and two young children. So thank you so much for being on the show. I really, uh, I'm really excited to have you on because actually I, my childhood dream was to be a filmmaker. and. Um, and uh yeah I I I was going to be a film director and as I grew up I talked myself out of it and I chickened down and I was just like this is just not uh you know uh, a realistic ambition to have and so I love that you're going for it when did this become a dream for you I got into radio if you recall many years ago cuz I thought well maybe this is a good creative outlet for me I'll be on the radio and then, and, and yet it's a job with a paycheck and benefits. And I did it for a couple of years and I did, uh, I didn't love it, you know, and I did well, you know, in a relatively short amount of time. And I was on the radio here in Toronto. And then all the entire time I was on the radio, I was always writing films and short films and trying to figure out how I could make it with like basically no money. And then I lost my job in radio, which was a bit of a gift because I was miserable And I ended up getting a job producing an online video channel, right? Again, a very stable, I made a paycheck and yet it was always kind of there, right? Like I was always writing and thinking about doing my own things. And I got pregnant, which was nice, which was... (laughs) (laughs) Which makes everything easier. (laughs) Exactly. So then that happened and I was like, oh God. I mean, I wasn't a teen mom or anything, but I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, well, this is something. So... There is something I have to say, kind of, you grow up really quickly, as you know, when suddenly you're responsible for another human life. And you're like, you know what, what am I doing? Like, I'm going to just go off on my own and I'm going to try to do two things. One, I'm going to start my own company because I do like money and I'm not, I don't, I'm at a stage in my life where I can't really be a starving artist, right? Yeah, totally. So sometimes when I look back, I think, you know what, I should have started pursuing this dream when I was 21 or 22 but you totally know, you know what though I probably wouldn't have the confidence or the tenacity or the maturity to have stuck with it you know because there's a lot of rejection yeah. and there's a lot of of the unknown right and so yeah. now that I'm 41 I'm 41 and I've been pursuing this whole filmmaker thing since you know for a few years now I feel like it's actually the right time I'm not scared that I'm 41. I'm actually, I think it's a great time for me to be doing this. Because I love that because it kind of feels like, yeah, yeah you, sometimes you're like, did I miss the boat? Because, well, there's also that whole 10 hours, 10,000 hours thing, you know, because yeah. I feel like, oh, I'm starting to write a book now. If people were doing this, you know, they're amazing, but they started when they were 20. It feels coming late to the game, but I love that you're saying that this is like the right time to be doing this. And everything up until this point, was not a wasted effort. Like everything I've done, mm-hmm. I've felt a lot of rejection and I've been told no and I've dealt with all sorts of inequities because of my gender perhaps or any other number of things. Yeah. But that like builds, you know, it's built me to the place where I am now where I can do things very confidently and with a lot of knowledge behind me and a lot of experience, right? So I think that helps whenever you're trying to do something that is a little bit on the periphery and it's more creative and you put yourself out there, it certainly doesn't hurt to have some life experience behind you. You know what I mean? I love that. I think so. I love that you're reframing that for me. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) No, think of it as a benefit. It's not a hindrance. Like, yeah. So when I left radio and I started doing this video production, I pretty much taught myself everything. I taught myself how to shoot, how to edit, how to produce incredible and how to direct. Right. Because I didn't go to school and I, I, I wasn't in a position to go back to school. I had a new baby. I had to figure out how to support, help support our family, right? 
Yeah. And like, thankfully I've got Will who's like incredible support and yeah. he's also in a creative field. So he gets it. Right. So yeah. I started my company framework creative, which at the time just produced online video content. Cause this was about 10 years ago. Yeah. That's amazing. That was the right time. I guess. Eh? <laughs> so, so that worked out. Okay. And so framework is a company that is solvent and it kind of I've got like a wonderful girl who my, my friend and colleague, Pam, who essentially runs the company for me now. And then mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I partnered with another friend from university and he and I started another company called Play Factory. And what we do is along with creating video content and animated content, we create gamified and interactive experiences. So in the past, I'd made a lot of training videos, a lot of corporate videos, and so yeah. using his skill set and my skill set, we've started another company called Play Factory that is a bit more innovative. And so, you know, and I, I saw what was happening. Like a lot of people are doing video in-house now. They don't want a vendor who's going to charge X amount of dollars. They want to just pay somebody a salary and now you do it all in-house. So oh, I could wow. see that happening. So a couple of years ago, Scott yeah. and I got together and started kind of a sister company to Framework. And so that's what, that's what I'm focusing on a lot now in order to continue to make money. But as well as doing that, I am pursuing this film career. <laughs> and I had another, <laughs> and of course I had another kid. So there's that, right? Yeah. So, no, that's insane. It's totally crazy. Um, how do you, like, do you ever feel inhibited about pursuing this creative project when you've got this company and um, eyes on you? Like, I mean, do you feel shy about it at all? Or do you feel like... Well, that's going back to the whole life experience thing. Like, I don't know yeah. about you, Catalina, but I just stopped. I give zero fucks. <laughs> Amazing. I'm working on it. Right? Because it's like, come yeah. on, man. Like, I have yeah. two children out of this body. I have yes. shit myself in front of, you know, 25 <laughs> residents, medical residents. You know, like, I just, yeah. there, and, and I don't want to lean on that too much in terms of like, yeah. but there is something very empowering. I'm like, oh God, I don't care. You know what? Yeah. Think like I deserve this. I, yeah. I might fail miserably. I might get laughed off stage, but, and I tell this to the kids, like you have no idea what you're capable of until you try doing it. And you know what? Yeah. You might suck at it. Like, so yeah. what? At least you yeah. learned that you sucked at it. Right. Like there yeah. are certain things that I am not very good at when it comes to my companies but mm -hmm. I can pay people to be good at it, right? Yeah, so, I mean, no, that's awesome. And then as far as the filmmaking goes, I mean, I, I would be lying if I said there's not moments of like complete and utter insecurity. Of course, of course you're yeah. going to be like, what is it called? Imposter syndrome? Well, yeah, because especially like, like I'm just writing a book, I'm all by myself and, you know, I might some days have some days where I'm just cringing at it, but you have when you're making a film, it's a collaborative team project. So you have to like be, you know, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, faking it in front of everybody if you're in that mood, you know what I mean? Oh, in that frame of mind. hundred percent. And so yeah. there, there are certainly times when I'm like on set and I'm saying things and I'm like, I wonder if everybody thinks I'm an absolute idiot right now. But then <laughs> I think, oh, who gives a shit? I don't care if you, do or if you don't. Right. Like, yeah. So like I said, I, when I get those moments of like, I should have been doing this at 22, I think, no, I yes. have, because I'll tell you something, I would have cared. I would have crawled into a shell and thought, mm. oh, but yeah, you know what? It's all led me to this point. And I think all of those experiences I've had being in radio, being on the air, like when I was on the air and radio, people had direct access to me. They could call you up. Like you'd say something that you thought, okay, I'm going to prepare this thought. It's going to be intelligent. It's going to be interesting and it's going to be entertaining. And so you say it and then, you know, people have direct access. They call you on the phone. People will yeah. call you on the phone and be like, <laughs> you suck. I hate you. You're a <laughs> bitch, right? <laughs> you're like 25 you're like oh okay thank you for calling uh yeah. and I suppose it's like there was no social media which is kind of actually yeah. there was but it wasn't like it is now so I suppose the same could be said for social media but this is people's voices like a human yeah. being is like I hate you you suck <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, made you. I guess you grew a thick skin because of it. Well, exactly. And I'm like, all right, yeah. thank you. And so you do. You do develop a thick skin. So for me, I'm like, you know what? That's what it was part of. That there, there was a reason for me to be on the radio, and it, I developed a very thick skin, and mm -hmm. I learned how to deal with a very uh, 
male dominated industry. I learned how to navigate my way through that successfully. Yeah. And that's so, definitely one of the things that scared me about film too. It's like, there's only Steven Spielberg and the rest is, you know what I mean? Like, it's not for women really. Well, but, it's a nice time yeah, to be a woman. I will say that like there's, yeah. a, a, the door is opening wider and wider. And so yeah. that's, that's not a terrible thing. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that as I navigate the film world. So I've been doing this since I was like, I'm going to say I've been, I've been writing since I was 26, roughly, right? Wow. Did I, when did I start producing films? I mean, I started my company when I was 30. So I've yeah. been creating content, video content for 11 years, but I've only yeah. really been doing like writing and directing my own stuff for about six years, right? Yeah. But that's long enough. I feel like, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it and I'm more confident each time I do it. And I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, who cares? So, Even if nothing ever, if I never get to make a big, huge feature film, it's okay. Yeah. Like, look at yeah. what I get to do and make and, and have fun doing it and, and have these interesting experiences. Right. So yeah. anyway, I mean, you got to go to LA for a film fest. So tell yeah. me about your projects and tell me about LA. Okay. So the first like passion project I did was a very short web series called uncles. And it was based on stories about people's uncles. And it was just a three part series. So because of framework, because I'd been create, because I started this company where I produce video content, I met a whole lot of people with lots of talent with the right gear and the right skill set. So it's like a community. So I have all these wonderful people who've helped me make my passion projects right yeah because it could be quite expensive otherwise so yeah we did that and that was fun so that just got my wheels in motion and I'm like I can do this so then actually a friend of mine Phil who I happen to live beside he is a film producer he's like Larissa let's make something funny together you're funny and you're creative blah 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 so we did try to apply for money from a now defunct film fund and I didn't get it and we're like forget it let's just make one it takes place in one room So it doesn't cost much money. You don't need a whole lot of location. And of course, I've got my kind of gaggle of fabulous film people that will help me make it, right? Amazing. So then we made full circle and all the cosmos aligned. We got some wonderful actors, Canadian actors in it. And it's just a very short 13 minute comedy between a mother and a daughter. And it kind of is about the the generation gap, which isn't really as wide as we might think, even though, you know, if you're a 41 year old woman and you look at a 15 year old girl, you're like, wow, we are worlds apart, but we're not, you know, like there's different technology, but there are some things that will just never change. So I made, I wrote and directed that and it got, yeah, it got into a festival here in Toronto and one in LA. So my friend, Lisa, who is a producer, she works on working moms and she does a lot of independent stuff on her own. She's hilarious. Amazing. So I said, let's go to LA and see our film in this festival. Mm-hmm. Like, what the heck? So we did. So we went down there and I tell you what, it was hilarious. We had a who. We ended up at some mansion in the Laurel Canyon. Like, Amazing. Was, I'm like, I'm like playing basketball with some young kid from like 13 Reasons Why. I'm like, what the Oh hell? my God. I'm like, what is happening right Surreal. now? What is happening? <laughs> You know, there was an open bar. So I will admit that I might have had some drinks <laughs> while I was playing basketball with some 22 year old dude amazing and I got in some pretty sick three-pointers FYI but um yeah anyway we had a blast and I mean it didn't win anything but that's fine like watching my film up in a this beautiful old theater in Beverly Hills with other films that were really well done felt yeah. really really nice you know it's like well wow, my, my film can stand up against these ones it felt cool yeah congratulations on that Thanks. what I find so interesting about your story is just like the whole serendipity like you just you know happened to did you admit to getting fired from the broadcast I don't want to put that out um so you get fired then yeah. you create your own video company which gives you uh access to these people that can help your passion project yeah. come true I mean like doesn't that you know when you put all the pieces together like that's crazy. It was like totally meant to be, don't you feel? Yes. And I'll tell you one thing that's kind of crazy too, because it can be quite daunting, especially when you're like, yeah. I haven't been to film school, you know? Yeah. And I think also what was really cool was meeting, so living beside my friend, Phil, who's a film producer and him being like, I think you should just start doing this. So it's really nice when you have somebody who is in the industry 
who is yeah. like supporting you and, and pushing you and lifting you up as well as my friend, Lisa, who's in the industry. So now it's like, it, it is very serendipitous. I must say, but yeah. I feel like most things in life are, you know, like, yeah. And so it's been really, yeah, fun. And I mean, at this point I've written a feature film. It's been through a lot of versions. It's like you Catalina with your book. Like yeah. I started writing this thing, Jesus, like a year and a half ago, maybe. Yeah. And it still probably needs work, but it's gotten to a pretty good place. So yeah. I've done another short film called The Girl with the Unicorn Horn, which is like a mockumentary, which is ridiculous. It's so silly. Amazing. I know. I can't wait to show you. I think you'll like it. I've got my kids yeah. are in it because my kids are a product of myself and Will. So they're not shy in front of the camera. Awesome. I know. And they, they work for cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they don't listen. Yeah, they haven't joined the union yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's that. But then, so that's in post-production. And you know what I'm doing? And I don't know. I don't want to jinx it or anything. I can be a bit superstitious. But I'm, yeah. I'm going to apply for, I want to get into the Canadian Film Center, which is a very good, it, it's like basically like now I'm going to go learn how to do it properly. <laughs> You know? Oh, that's awesome. So we'll no, that's totally, I totally get that because it's like, you know, I kind of worked in secret on this book finally when like the universe had taken everything away from me where it's like there's nothing left for you to do <laughs> and uh now I feel like I'm properly learning how to do it I kind of wish I had done this four years ago because then I would have done it properly from the start but yeah it's all part of you know the journey and everything so yeah I totally get it kind of you know backstepping or backpedaling or yeah. or picking it up but it's great because from initially you're coming from a place of pure inspiration which is nice to have that freedom too before you know, um, you learn the right steps to do stuff. I think so. And I mean, everything to this point, everything that I've done up to this point has made sense, right? Like, yeah. And yeah. And so I'm going to give this a shot now. It's very competitive. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. Wouldn't it be nice if you were able to do a follow up and be like, Larissa, oh, get yes. in. <laughs> yes. But, awesome. And so what is it like a, a summer program or a year long program? No, or? It's about, it's about five or six months and it's intensive Intense. and, and it's also kind of cool because framework is at a place where I can leave the, not leave. I can, yeah. I can put it in other people's hands that I know will work hard and keep it going. Yeah, And then my partner in Play Factory, he's very creative too. So we're very understanding, like we'll go off and do our things and then come back and, and keep the machine going. Right. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, everything is led to this point. And I hope that the powers that be at the CFC <laughs> also can see me as a good fit. We'll see. We'll see. But it would be wonderful. I'm very much looking forward to, and if they don't, that's fine too. Whatever. I'll figure something else out. I'll just keep on keeping on. Cause I'm not you know, I've got a lot of energy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah, uh, and I love that you've like created this space and the scenario that allows you to do that sort of thing, right? That's, that's so important. Yeah. So, and just prioritizing yourself. You say, I mean, it sounds like you've had a lot of support. I know Will's amazing. He's like gorge, so supportive. Um, how do you do, do you ever have naysayers? Are you your own naysayer? Do, yeah. How do you deal with that? Yeah. I mean, nobody's ever going to, I mean, listen, you get to a certain point in your life. I'm like, if somebody's going to be a jerk, like you can yeah. go off. Like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> like you don't yeah. need to be my friend. Like that's fine. Yeah. I've got plenty of friends. Right. So no, yeah. I've got no naysayers. I mean, yeah, I guess sometimes you're your own worst enemy and yeah. it seems to coincide with like premenstrual syndrome. <laughs> 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 awesome then, and also it? from your years in radio you can deal with the critics right oh, when, yeah. I don't know if your both of your stuff is getting reviewed yet but when it does now you've kind of got that ammo like oh. okay bring it yeah. I can handle this I don't care like when you have people yeah. calling you on the phone with their voices telling you <laughs> I hate you you're so stupid why are you on the right you suck you know go to hell oh my god oh the amount of things I used to get called by this one guy who was in prison and I'm like, oh. why are you calling me? Like, isn't there oh anybody else you can call? I mean, he was actually quite yeah. nice, but every now and then he'd get nasty. I'm like, I'm, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> like, okay. and, oh my God. And you know what? And you know, you know, too, as being a writer, that's the other thing, right? Like all of this experience lends itself to being a better writer because it's like, I have seen and observed and been a part of so many things. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, I don't, I don't beat myself up for not having done this at 23. Like we yeah. can't all be Lena Dunham, right? Like it's amazing yeah. that 
Yeah, it, yeah. And I feel like, yeah, I had to live a life. So like, like, yeah, I could write, but I had to live a life. So I had stories to tell. And now I have so many stories. I'm like, I just can't even keep up with it. That's right. Exactly. Uh, so that's yeah. another reason why I'm like, I have no regrets. Like I wouldn't have been able yeah. to write like this. I wouldn't have had the maturity or the ability or the confidence. It's the confidence more than anything. I just know it. Yeah. I know if I tried to do this when I was a younger woman, it would not have worked out so well, you know? What's been the most challenging thing about getting into film at this time in your life or just or period? In general. Yeah. Well, I think the, the unknown, <laughs> like, yeah. I think when you go to law school and then you article and then you work, you know, you're like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a lawyer. Like I will be yeah. a, a lawyer because I've put yeah. in all the right things. I've checked all the boxes, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether you're good or bad, it doesn't really matter. You can still be a lawyer, right? Yeah, totally. Being a filmmaker, yeah. you can do everything and check all the boxes and still not really get any success out of it. So mm -hmm. I guess the unknown is the most challenging. Like it would be nice if I could get some kind of success other than my own personal gratification. Do you know what I mean? It would be nice if someone paid me to write for them or paid me. Now, I, I shouldn't say I have done a lot of paid work, obviously, because of my company. Yeah. And a lot of that's been um, like advertorial or corporate or something. But I'm talking about doing comedy. I mean, you know, I'm my, my passion and my dream is to write and direct comedy. Yeah. And it's got a lot. It's got a female slant. I can't help it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So all my comedy is kind of. Well, with the exception of uncles, but other than that, most <laughs> of my comedy has got us. So my the dream, the dream is to write and direct comedy that has a yeah. female slant in Canada. I would love to do it in Canada, but uh, amazing. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. What's been the most gratifying thing about getting into film at this time in your life? Oh my God! Just like the 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 constant inspiration, like waking up and being like. I'm working towards something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. think I think there are a lot of people, now that I'm in my 40s, I think yeah. a lot of people, that's where things start getting a bit squirrely, right? Like, what am yeah. I doing with my life? Where am I going? Like, am I happy? Yeah. Is this it? And this is yeah. where this whole midlife crisis, I think, ha the phrase is coined because yeah. you think, Jesus, like, I've got maybe 20 more working years. Is this it? You you do start thinking that way when you hit 40. Yeah. It's like clockwork. Gord warned me because he's seven years older and yeah. he was right. It's yeah. like, yeah. You start to have this kind it's of way. existential crisis. So for me, I don't, yeah. I don't really have it because I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of out of control. I'm always hopeful, right? Like I'm always yeah. like, I'm working on this and maybe it'll lead to that and maybe I'll get this. And I mean, so I mean, if you're, I'm a pretty optimistic person. So it's like, you could sit around and say, why am I doing this? Nothing's ever going to come of it. Or yeah. you can say, isn't this cool? Like there's always something around the corner and you never know what's going to happen. So I'm kind of one of those, right? Where it's like, yeah. I'm just going to keep doing it because you never know what's going to happen. I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, because I know I, like passion projects are funny, right? Like yeah. it comes, there's something inside of you that compels you to do something, whether it's like make a movie or write a book. And then at some point it switches over into like maybe it's like when you've done your first draft or you've written, you know, the screenplay and it's like, okay, now it's going to, you know, do you put it out there? And then the expectation or the joy sort of evolves a little bit. So it's like, I wonder, like, can you be satisfied with just, you know, um, indulging in your passion project yeah. or, you know, um, there's an expectation at the end of it. And yeah, that's kind of a weird spot to be in. Like when you're like halfway through, you know what I mean? But you know, what's nice though. I mean, to th when I think about it a little deeper, even if what's nice is that we do have the internet now. So whatever you make, you can share, which is kind of yeah. cool. So even if you make something like even uncles, I just put it on YouTube and all that and Facebook and, and, and shared it through social media. And just knowing yeah. that people were watching it and it made them laugh. Yeah. I mean, that's very satisfying. So yeah. I think at the very least, now that we live in this age of you can share whatever you want, there yeah. is, there, there is something there, right? It's like, I don't have to wait for a broadcaster to say, yeah, I'll put this on TV or, you know, something like that. So, so there's always yeah. that, right? Yeah, very exciting. Um, is the goal to commit this to this full time eventually? Like, would you like this to be your everything? It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, it would be nice, Catalina. But I'm also, <laughs> you know, I'm a realistic. And and I'll tell you something else that I haven't really touched on very much during this interview because we're talking more about yeah. film and creativity. Yeah. The other side of me is an entrepreneur and I, I'm a businesswoman and I'm a woman in technology now, right? And I've kind of yeah. adopted that as a, also a passion, right? Yeah. Because I feel like, it doesn't hurt to know a bit about business when you're going into film or, or novel writing or anything, yeah. right? Because you don't, you want to go in there and, and be able to, def, you know, sell yourself and be able to talk to people on a level that's going to be, make sense. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of want it all. Catalina, is that crazy? Yeah. No, I hear you, lady. I hear you. Because we're, we're multifaceted, right? Yeah. And I was just thinking this about this the other day, and I don't know, I, I guess it was maybe with my writing group or something, but, you know, um, Stephen King in his book on writing, he talks about how, like, you know, and I picture it too, like going to like a writer retreat or disappearing from my family for a weekend. Right. And he talks about like creating this office where nobody was allowed in and he was going to have this gorgeous big desk. And he finally did it. And there was like, nothing you know what I mean right. and he realized then he ended up moving the desk into a corner of the room because he's so much more profound than I am but it was something along the lines of like like you know it's it, it has to be part of you have to be living life for that to work like you yeah. can't just like you know go off in the woods necessarily right. and 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 be inspired or produce too like yeah. it's all kind of the same one in the same it, he's right I, I love that I yeah. need to read this yeah. because yeah, that is exactly what it is. So there's one side of me that's like, I would love the opportunity to get paid to write and direct comedy. Yeah. But there's another part of me that's also like, I love building these businesses I've been a part of. I love that my mm. relatively new business is in technology and I have an opportunity to help women. And mm. So, yeah, I mean, there's, I'm, I'm not conflicted, but I'm like, yeah. we're talking about, like, I can, yeah. I can just keep on keeping on and hope for the best. And I it mean, fuels each other and it fuels yeah. each other. Cause I think you could also just get like kind of run out of ideas or, yeah. you know, it's like, you need to kind of walk away from the book or the movie mm -hmm. and go live life a little bit so that you can come back to it. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, to be perfectly honest, what I love more than anything is sitting down and writing. I must say. Yeah. So that I is, love that. That is my favorite thing to do. Um, yeah. But you know what? That being said, if somebody's like, come and write 40 hours a week, I think I'd probably be like, ah, I, I got to also do something with my business and sell. Yes, and, totally. You know what yeah. I mean? So the grass is always greener. So right now I kind of have the best of both worlds, I guess. It, well, yeah. until maybe it'd be nice to somebody to pay me to make stuff instead of it coming out of my pocket. But, <laughs> yes. You know, that would be that, nice. That's the goal. What about ever getting in front of the camera? Do you do that or you want to do that? Well, you know what? It's funny because I do, I've done improv, right? Oh, that's the other kind yeah. of PSN turning point. I have to admit, and I yeah. left this out. So my husband, Will, for my 36th yeah. birthday, bought me um, Second City improv classes. So you start at level Amazing. A, right? Because, you know, Amazing. Kevin, I've always been funny and goofy. And I know. I totally see you in front. I mean, like yeah. you should be that, the mom in that short. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, okay, so... I went to improv and I loved it. Awesome. ABC, I went all the way through it, right? But you know what it did? It gave me a lot of, it was really, it helped me become a better director because yeah. knowing what it feels like to be in front of an audience and what's oh, nice God. about improv is like, you have to think about it right then and there. Like it's not yeah. even like stand up where you can rehearse it and rehearse it. Yeah. Um, I mean, stand up's got its own thing because it's just you, at least in improv, you've yeah. got a team of people, right? So you can all bond yeah. together. But um, yeah, there was something very liberating about that. So that was another moment when I was 36 with a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Oh. I started going Thursday nights to this class and it just opened up this door for me. And I thought, this is really cool. I guess I would have liked to have been doing improv when I was in my 20s. What harm was it, right? But I, I didn't. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I loved it. So that I enjoyed. Being in front of the camera... I'm just, I'm not a very good actress, Catalina. I've tried. I've fucking tried. Really? <laughs> like, you got to know your strengths. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was in radio. Yeah. I had an agent where I would do voice work. And every now and then he'd send me on some commercial audition, right? Because like, yeah. if I make money, he makes money. 
Yeah. And I would be so terrible. I'm like, I'm <laughs> not good at this. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. I would have picked it for natural. Oh, that's God. funny. No, listen, this is why I'm good at improv because it's jokes and it's goofy. Yes. It's- like for me yeah. to pretend to be like a mom that's really enjoying using Windex, like, come on, yeah. man. I yeah, can't yeah. help but make fun of myself. Like I'm just yeah. not that way inclined. I can't. And I yeah. certainly couldn't be a serious actor. Oh my God. Me yeah. like trying to like make myself cry or something is the most hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, uh, actually, I, that I, would am be not, I am not in front of the camera. Even if it was comedy, I couldn't do it. I just feel so gross and icky. It's just not my talent. But yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm not terrible at directing people yeah because I know what's good in my head and I and I can see it in front of me and I'm good at talking to people so that's why I like directing a lot too right yeah what would you say to listeners who are thinking of pursuing their dream midlife or mid-career oh my god what why not like Jesus (laughs) (laughs) like why wouldn't you what why not what's gonna stop you like I mean I know it's probably if if your idea is to quit your job and pursue something that is a different story right Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have the guts to do that. Like I need to make money. I need, Mm -hmm. I have a mortgage, you know, I've got kids who will need braces and all that crap, (laughs) you know, and hockey and all this nonsense. So yeah, yeah, that's tough. If you're going to quit your job to pursue something, that's up. I can't give any advice to that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's great advice right there. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. That's up to you. But if you are, thinking about trying something new, I would, and even if it's something little, like, you know, I've never, whatever, done yoga or something like that. I know we're talking a bit of a smaller scale, but yeah, yeah, I mean, just go for it. Right. And, yeah. and ugh, what's stopping you? Who cares what people think? Who cares what people say? If you're not hurting anybody, it's, I say, go for it a hundred percent. Right. And if you can, this, this day and age, like you can kind of life is more flexible, right? Like, or it can be more Mm. flexible. So you might even have an employer who's willing to let you try this, right? If you're too, if you're in a position, because the problem with throwing it all away midlife is you probably have some responsibilities. That's why people do this when they're 23, right? Right. So that's, that's the problem, right? It's like, Jesus, I've got to bring in this paycheck and I've got to do this and do that. Should I throw it all away? Yeah. Or should I? And it is that all or nothing thing that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And that, like you were saying earlier, you can be doing running on multiple tracks at the same time. Exactly. There is time. There is time Mm -hmm. to do this. And I'm not saying you need to stay up till 2 a.m. You just have to be very Mm -hmm. efficient with your day. Yeah. Which I feel like I'm very good at. So if you're an efficient person and you can multitask, it'll be give it a shot. Um, Or even if you like, I have a friend, like I'm in this female entrepreneur group, and she took a year off of her very stable government job to start a business. Amazing. And I'm not saying everybody has that luxury in their full-time permanent job, but if you do and there's something you want, you should a hundred percent take advantage of that. I don't know. Yeah. Even like yeah. some of my girlfriends are teachers and they do four over five. Have you heard of this? And then you get paid four year, five years of your salary in four years and then you take a year off. Do you know? Anyway. Oh my God. People- I'm so in the wrong profession. <laughs> I know I'd be a terrible teacher. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I would do. You know what? It's have, just as well. I have, totally. no patience. I have absolutely no patience. What tips and advice do you have for people who are pursuing a passion project? What tips or advice do I have? I think you need to rely on your network of people. Don't be scared to oh, ask. Don't be scared. That's great. To, right? Like, don't be scared to ask for things because the word no is something you're going to have to get used to. Get used to hearing no, but don't let it discourage you. Let it propel you, I suppose. Let it ignite that fire in your belly. And Mm. um, yeah, go for it. You know what I mean? Like, who knows how much time you have in this little life? So what's what's the point in waiting? Cool. And now what are you working on now or next or where can people find you? So I am, like I mentioned, I have two companies. I have Framework and Play Factory. So I'm working on building Play Factory in particular because it's a bit newer. Um, I will be coming out with my second short, The Girl with the Unicorn Horn. It's a short mockumentary comedy. Where can people see Girl with the Unicorn? Uh, Well, I'll probably have a showing here in Toronto at some point. And then we'll try to get into some festivals. And that's about it. And then probably the internet. (laughs) And so (laughs) I'm trying to get um, I'm trying to get some interest in my feature film, which the working title is. So the working title for my feature film is Jenny C 
And it's about a woman who's having a midlife moment where, oh. yes, it's pretty funny, where her, she has a stay-at-home husband. She's a breadwinning mom. She actually works in radio, which is not a huge surprise. This is where I came from, right? Yeah. And an old flame connect, connects with her on um, a, a Facebook Messenger and starts yeah. to ignite this old spirit. And she starts to see, see her youth through rose-colored glasses Yeah. and makes some bad decisions. And so it's a comedy. And yeah. that, that is her, that is what I've written. So it would be nice to be able to pursue that. So that's what I'm up to. Awesome. And is that the thing that you'll be taking? Is that the story that you'll be taking to the Canadian film yes. program that yes. you want to go to? Yes. Awesome. Well, good luck. Thank oh my you, God, that sounds amazing. Good I'm so luck. excited for you. you good luck with you too. And all in your book, I want to read it. I want to come to all the readings. I want to introduce <laughs> it. I want to, when everybody's mad about it for some reason, I want to do the book burning. <laughs> amazing amazing no I mean there's uh oh god we have we need to have more conversations because I'm uh, yeah we got we got lots to chat about all right so. cool we'll reach out anytime Catalina. thanks Larissa thanks for being on the show Thanks, Larissa, for being on the show. And thank you uh, for your great tips and advice. I love how you reframe, uh, you know, midlife passion project is actually the right time to be taking on that passion project. Uh, so if you're listening to this right now and you're uh, no longer 20, that's okay. It's actually the perfect time for you to start that passion project. And I also love that you're working on so many things at the same time and you're so awesome at all these different things because it's okay for passion projects to live alongside family and career and we don't have to give one up for the other and they can actually fuel each other and I think that's liberating so excited for you guys let me know what you're up to and good luck